177 years going on 10,000 
is a special year for our Lahui. The Mo'i at the time is Kauwi Kiauli. O lelo pupa ko, Kau? Kauwi Kiauli. Kauwi Kiauli. Kauwi Kiauli. Kauwi Kiauli, our Mo'i, Kamehameha Ekolo, the son of our Mo'i, Kamehameha Ekahi, is a Mo'i at the time. He starts to become a Mo'i at age 10. You can imagine that type of kuleana on a young Hawaiian leading his nation. He values all things important to our culture, but also the, the important things of the world, literacy and learning and knowledge and wisdom. He seeks those things out and brings them back to Hawaii and we become the most literate nation in the world at that time. As Kawi Keauli is continue to, continuing to grow the nation, he wants to follow up on the work of his brother and his father before him. He wants Hawaii to not only be a kingdom, but an independent nation state. And so he sends Timoteo Ha'alilio, William Richards, and Sir George Simpson to America, to Great Britain, and France, the three naval powers of the world, to secure Hawaii, the Hawaiian kingdom's sovereignty. While they're away, there is a land dispute taking shape here in Honolulu. Richard Charlton, who's sitting here in the be on behalf of Great Britain, gets into a land dispute over some aina he believes belongs to him. Kawi Keuli and his, and his leadership do not acknowledge his request. Charlton, in his anger, is able to send a memo to Lord George Paulette. Paulette comes into Honolulu and he demands a meeting with Kawi Keuli. A correspondence is going back and forth for several weeks from February 10th, 1843. Back and forth, demanding a meeting with Kawi Keuli. Not explaining the situation in a hostile manner. Kawi Keuli does not agree to this. He has learned the lesson. You do not go on board the ship of an angry captain, especially when you are the head of state. You learn with Captain Cook or more like Captain Cook learned with us. So Kauwi Keuli will not agree to this request. After two weeks of back and forth, Paulette is frustrated with the lack of movement in his direction. And Paulette finally gives an ultimatum. Your Honorable Kamehameha Ekolu, you cede your kingdom to me in the name of Great Britain, or I will open fire on your people of Honolulu. Our way, everybody say, our way. Our way. That is Heva. That is also known as gunboat diplomacy. That is why Kauwi Keuli had sent emissaries to stop events like this from happening. So as Harley Leo and Richard and Simpson already got the agreement from America, a verbal agreement from Great Britain that we'd be a sovereign nation, they were still struggling to hearing this news weeks later that the kingdom has been occupied. On February 25th, after Kauwi Keuli surrenders the kingdom in protest to Great Britain, he tells his people I have surrendered our Aupuni, but that if we are Pono and if we Pule, it will be restored. He files his protest. Paulette's first actions, he lowers every single high Hawaii. And in some accounts, he has been burnt and destroyed. 
Everybody say, oh, way. Oh, way. Heaven. Heaven. Our beautiful high Hawaii, the Kamehameha Ekahi, has created himself, is burnt and destroyed. In its place, Union Jacks are risen. And from February 25th, a five-month occupation begins. This is a very confusing and challenging time for our people. Not sure what is happening, not sure what is the fate of our nation. Kaui Keoli works diligently to send out the messages to let Great Britain know that a heva is happening here in Hawaii. The message is received by Admiral Thomas. Admiral Thomas sees that his general, Lord George Paulette, has taken Hawaii captive. Admiral Thomas sails to Hawaii in July of 1843 and he asked for a meeting with Kaui Keoli. He asked to make things formal. As a Union Jack was above us for these five months of all of this eha, Admiral Thomas vows to make things formal in the name of Queen Victoria. That is why this street right here is Victoria Street. This Kula Okahua, everybody say Kula. Kula. Okahua. Okahua. That is the old name of this area, Kula Okahua. Here at this place, Kula Okahua, Admiral Thomas asked Kaui Keoli to hold a special ceremony. And this is when he has the ceremony on that day. He brings his British troops out to shore. He asks for Kaui Keoli to come with the many Aloha Aina. And they gather here at Kula Okahua. And they have a special ceremony on July 31st, 1843 where they lower the Union Jack. Now as you see, we also have the High Amelita up there because we are still waiting for America to restore our air like they promised in the Cleveland Liliwo Kalani Agreement. Everybody say, oh way! So on that day, a special ceremony is held. The Union Jack, and hopefully soon, the American flag is lowered. As they're lowering the flag, I want you guys to visualize and imagine the emotions of our kupuna at that time. As we have two of our kiki o ka'aina here, kiki who are deeply rooted to this celebration of la hoi hoi'ea. Kapi to huki ilalo, the heva. And restoring the air of our Alpuni. We tried to WD-40 this thing, but it's still tight. But just like on releasing the grip of America, it's gonna take a little time. It's gonna take a little effort. And it's gonna take all of us working together and sending that good mana together to do it. So as High Beretania and High Amelika is lowered on that day. Huki Lalo! Huki Lalo! Hukilalo! 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 Again, we are now reflecting on our kupuna who are witnessing this day 177 years ago, right here in this papa. Kula Okahua under the guidance of Rear Admiral Thomas making things formal in the name of Great Britain making things formal for our kingdom The struggle to release the grip of America and Great Britain will be hard, <laughs> but it will be worth it, right? Yeah. Imagine Hawaii, the nation that was a neutral nation, the Switzerland of the Pacific, being in control of our own resources, our own waters, our own lands. We are waiting for this day 
We're waiting for the Heba of Amelita and Great Britain to be removed from all of our flagpoles in Hawaii. It makes me think of the prophecy from Kapihe. The whole feeling my Hey, you want a whole Luna? 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 Hey, who on a papaya? Hey, who on a papaya? Hey, who on a papaya? prophecy speaks of that which is above will come down with Great Britain and America's flag. That which is below, the Maka'ainana, the Poyoka'aina will rise up. When all of our Lahui comes together as one. And our pillars of our Lahui will stand again. In that pool funny, as it's free rays, for oh, Mako Tau in the pool. Right. Hey, Kali Kapoo! Hey, Kali Kapoo! For all of our Lahui, for all of the beaches around the world, for all of our Alohaina, hey, Kali Kapoo! For the 177 years of La Hoi Hoi Ea, the restoration of our nation. In 1843, on this day, when the flag was re-risen, the 21 guns were sounded from all over Honolulu. A church service happened right down the road here at Kauai Hao Church. Kauai Keoli, on the steps of Kauai Hao Church, makes his famous statement. He says, Ua mau, ke ea, o ka aina, i ka pono, ka kua pau. Ua mau, ke ea, o ka aina, i ka pono, hana hau. Ua mau, ke ea, o ka aina, i ka pono. The sovereignty of our land was preserved through pono action. This becomes our first national holiday of the kingdom. La ho i ho i ea. How about a huge hand for a two alakai to a two homana? A young kid. I'm going to pass it to Kumuhina to alakai and he was in any pool in Kenele. We must sanitize. Thank you. Ano ay kaya loha yaka ko a paulo ay kalahui aloha. Aloha. May habay inui a kaya moko kaya ave. Ahi kiloa kaya ne hinu hinu ni iha o kahelani. Kaya loha ay ne yaka ko a pau. 
Ke aloha nui a kākou e nā kūpuna nā māku a nā opio Ke aloha nui kei alā mai kai aloha Ke olu olu Wa i ke makahoi kākou i kei alā mai kai Kei a kalā ka nā kolu kuma mamakahi o iulai i a makahiki E iwa kālua Iwa kālua Himeni kākou I ko kākou mele la hui E kū mai kākou i luna E olu olu e kū i luna And as we lift our voice to sing our national anthem Let us be reminded of the multiple things that is represented when we see our beloved flag. Let us be reminded of this land that we call home and this land that we will stand for and give our lives for. There are many pathways to do good for our Lahui. Sometimes we agree and sometimes we don't. The main thing is that we focus on our high, we focus on our people, our land, and all that it represents, and that we retain aloha in our hearts, even when the times get trying and challenging for all of us. It can only be the love of our nation, our aloha for our flag, the aloha that we have for our kupuna and our ohana. It can only be this aloha that will continue to unite and bond us even in times of trial and tribulation. Lahui, we have a journey and we are not done. We must continue to be steadfast. We must continue to onipa'a we must continue to aloha one another, brother and sister, family and friend. For the day that we stop doing that is the day that we dishonor the flag and all it represents for our people. Himeni pukako Hawaii ponoi. Hawaii ponoi.
peekaboo! again for joining us today, Kala Hoi Hoi Ea 2020. We're still fighting, we're still alive, gang. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna say a special mahalo for all of our beautiful high Hawaii. Don't they look so great in this park? Yeah. We're gonna say a special mahalo to Daniel Anthony and Mana Ai. We're setting up over 1,000 high Hawaii. We celebrate July 31st. Kala Hoi Hoi Ea. Big round of applause for Daniel and his Ohana. Staying up late, reclaiming Kailua. How's that action? Yeah. I'm gonna say mahalo to Hui Kale Mali Ali for their hard work throughout the decades and decades for hosting a pool ohe workshop. So if you were unable to honey pool, well, you can go see Lynette Cruz and all of the Ohana over there to hook you up. We also wanna say mahalo to the brothers, uh, the sons and daughters of Hawaiian warriors who presented earlier today. Those are the kupuna who um, did a short presentation today. We wanna mahalo them for their celebration and their like-mindedness in the restoration of our ale, restoration of our nation. How about a big round of applause for our keiki? Yeah. Juliana's tough, bro. What can I say? You're growing through it. But on behalf of Kala Hoi Hoi Ea, we also want to say a special mahalo to our Ava crew. You point your attention to where the Ahu is. See a couple of uh, handsome gentlemen standing next to it. Um, a few years ago, we took the time to build this ahu to balance, to be a koa, to draw all of our ia back home, to hoi hoi, to return to the truth, return to each other. In the process of denationalization of our Hawaiian kingdom, it is very important that we understand that we are Hawaiian. Yeah. We are Hawaiian. Yeah. We are Hawaiian. Yeah. And the Hawaiian Kingdom had many holidays. This, July 31st, 1843, Kala Hoi Hoi Ea, is the original, the first holiday. But we must not forget that in November 28th, 1843, oh, cool. Hawaii became independent. Ku o koa. Olelo ka ko. Ku o koa. Ku o koa. Ku o koa. To stand independent. Hawaii, the first non European member of the nation state. Upon which the occupation, reclamation continues to exist because of the works of this Ali right here, Kamehameha Kolu Kawi Keoli. I encourage you to read. I encourage you to read. I encourage you to read. I encourage you to share about the life of Kamehameha Kolu Kawi Keoli and the importance of Hawaii, the importance of our flag as well. So as you guys join us here today, for those of you guys who are all around the world, all throughout the communities, raising your high Hawaii, we want to say mahalo to you that we stand with you, that we fight for you, we teach for you, we live for you, we die for you. And so to all the generations who are also listening to this message, to the young leaders who will need to fill our shoes, to the keiki playing wrestling in the back. We honor you, we honor your ohana, and we honor all of those who gathered here today in celebration of our independence of our ale. We want to say mahalo to all of the honorees in the past years. Dr. Hanani K. Tras, Uncle Palani Vaughn, Kekuni Blaisdell, Kabasoli Nihel, Kuhi Pa Ahmad, Judy Napoleon, Imai Kalani Kalahe, Uncle Snakes in the house. This is his granddaughter. This is his granddaughter. Big Kuliana girl. 
We also have Uncle Kelly Skippy Yohane. We also honor Terry Lee, Cheko Olani, Peggy Ho'o oh. Ross, Uncle Walter Reedy, Auntie Kuanani Rogers, Bobby McGill. Also, Kobay Puna Gail Fiji. These are all our men, these are all our heroes. These are people we aspire to be. So, in the celebration of independence, we call their name. We bring life, we bring air to their work, to their legacy. So, on behalf of Kalaho Ihoi again, to close us out, Mahalo Nui Yao Kopaka Yopao, Noka Yahui Anamai, Noka Ho Alao Lea Anamai, Noka Ho Na Awao, Noka Ho Mana Anamai, Noka Kako Vee, Noka Kako Hana Nui, Noka Kako Ea. As you guys spend your guys' time here today, enjoying each other, relaxing, before you leave, I believe these high Hawaii all around this park are for you, are for us. So before you go home, take one of these flags with you, put it up, and don't ever take it down. That's the only thing we get. Contract, you take them, you never bring them down. Mahalo again, everybody, for showing up today. As we spread the word of our independence, we'll see you in November 28th as we celebrate La Kuokoa. Mahalo everybody for coming out today. Mahalo Hina, Mahalo Layana, Mahalo Kumukavika. As a close, because we like to close at Mele, we're going to ask Kumuhina to return to the microphone. Hoi hoi. This is also a special day, July 31st. It is also the birthday of Timoteo. Woo! The son of Daniel Anthony, responsible for all these flags. It is also a special celebration day. And I was there, I was witness. I was there, as Uncle Malcolm said. And I want to say a special mahalo and congratulations to Tammy Kanoa Wong and Liana Kanoa Wong for also celebrating the anniversary of their wedding, their marriage today. How about a big round of applause? Yeah. Once again, Lahui, mahalo for all of you guys' support. Mahalo for the defense. Mahalo for being kiai that we need for our Lahui. We want to mahalo also Baron Ching, who's walking off the stage right now. Those of you guys who are interested, those of you guys who want to learn more, we need your guys' help and support at Kaniakapupu, the famous site of Kaui Kaoli Summer Residence, where we had thousands upon thousands of uh, subjects who celebrated Kala Ho'i Ho'i Ea. Please go see Barry Ching for details and information. It'll be Sunday. August 3rd. Sunday, August 3rd. Please go inquire about visiting and contributing to the restoration of Kaniakapupu. We're gonna close now with the mele, so we wanna bring one of our favorite Himeni back to the stage and have her end us off in proper fashion. Ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause for Kumuhina. Before, before we do that, uh, I, I believe that we received the instruction already, yeah? We're supposed to take a high. For real. Is there any more picture taking that you are left? No? I would like everyone to go please, go pick up a high. Oh, yes. Um, if we can, uh, I'm not sure if we can manage the, the social distancing part of it. Uh, if we alulike and be not a wow about it, we can. Please go get a high. And come near the circle. Maintain your social distancing, please. Bombay, it goes out on top social media. And then everybody gonna look and say, yeah, look all the Hawaiians over there not keeping social distancing. And then we get blasted again. Hawaiian lives matter. Hawaiian lives matter. Hawaiian lives matter. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody, get a flag and come closer.
Those of you sitting on the fringe, grab a flag. us out, I would just like to say, this has to do with the honor and dignity of our flag. Let us make sure that we always do our very best to honor and respect our flag. Some of our kupuna might not look kindly to those of us who drape either the flag itself or some sort of flag apparel upon our person. And I understand that. In fact, recently I fielded a conversation about that. If you should so choose to do just that, please make sure that your words, your conduct, your manner, and the way you carry yourself is becoming of having the flag about your person. Our flag is not to be taken lightly, and our flag is not to be diminished in that which we see as pertaining to our individual, personal self. When we hold our flag, we hold the respect and the dignity of our nation near and dear to our heart. Let, us, let that be a reminder to us today as we sing. Aiko o kamo ana kailana ne Hawaii na oe oe a lulu kahonu a umea na kulu kulu e kalani ki e ki e au mai luna au e ke aloha. Okay, who 
Make sure you wave them high and proud. We want to say aloha in the kakoa po. You guys are sticking around today. Make sure you guys are safe. If you guys are interested in any la hoi hoi ya shirts, they may have some left over there. They're a hot item, limited edition. So make sure you go get them. Once again, gang, on behalf of Kala hoi hoi ya, Hawaiian Sovereignty Restoration Day. Aloha kako. Okay. 
a very important day as you all remember today is an important day to remember Papa Kekuni for giving us that ea and for those of us who shared his breath shared that ha we are the Kino Lao we are how he lives forever it is in our hands it is on our shoulders and it is upon our back that we will work towards the repair 
Oh, but it's right fully ours. You know. Uncle Kikuni. Believe wholeheartedly that the loss of our air, the suffocation of our people was directly related to the health maladies that continue to plague us today. And so his message, his force, his love, his aloha, his home, Halika Ohinani, was a very important meeting space for many of us here in this uh, gathering. And it's at that space where I began to really hear Uncle Kikuni. It's at Halek Ohinani where we got the Pupa Akai, the plan the rebellion. Um, it is at Halek Ohinani where many of us, including myself, embraced our Kanafa, embraced our Kue, embraced our resistance, embraced Ea. And it was a commitment. All of the apu that we shared together, all of the pictures taken, all of the documentation, all of the data, all of the mo'okuaho that we all shared together. Oko Kikuni awoke us to that consciousness, awoke us to our humanity, awoke us to what is the solution, what is the cure to what ails us most, and that is ea. I learned about Kalaho Ihoi Ea when I was about 22 years old. And it was because of Haleko Ohinani, it's because of many of you who are here today, Baron, Lynette, Auntie Terry, so many that have contributed. Shannon and Kelly, all of the faces, all of the hands, all of the donations, all of the work that it takes to raise a lahui from the ground. It is one thing to open our eyes and see, it's another thing to work together to get up off the ground. And so, four years after his hala, after he went to the lena to assume his position with the kupuna and the almakua who look over us today to fill our high Hawaii with that makani to send the clouds to keep us jaded and protected Papa Kekuni lives in our high Hawaii whenever I see the high Hawaii I see Papa Kekuni I see his smile and if you see his smile just remember that Hold it in your heart. And remember that we can be that medicine as well. We are the ale for our people. And you're here with us today. Like all of our ancestors are here with us. What a day to celebrate. Our independence, our life, our liberation. Mind, body, and soul. to understand and awaken to the fact that we are everything we need. To awaken ourselves to the fact that identity, like Papa Kekuni, really, really underscored to be proud to be Kanapa, to be unflinching to be Kanapa, to work hard as Kanapa, to commit as Kanapa. And so I'm happy and I'm proud and I'm humbled and honored to share this commitment with all of you. Together we are strong. And soon we will be we will be invincible. We will be infinite. Because of our aloha, which seeds grows into trees and our fruit, which now scatters the land, the valleys to the shorelines. We return to a sense of 
air, to a sense of our reality with and for one another. We understand that air is aina. We understand that air is kai, kind of law of security. We understand that air is our own personal health and the things that continue to oppress us and the real solution like Uncle Kikuni always shared with us and for those of us here and maybe for those who are watching online if you've been touched by Papa Kekuni, if you've been touched by your kupuna, who's put you on this path, then we return to their hail on July 31st. We celebrate their life, we celebrate their legacy, we celebrate that they continue to live forever through us, and that gives us great kuleana. The kuleana to be better than we were before. The kuleana to always leave it better than when we came. That we need to be better people on the day we that we hoki than we were the day before. So I'm very blessed to be associated with you all. I'm very uh grateful and overcome with the work that we all do in honor and memory of Abu Kikuni and for all of our ancestors who have gone to the lane up we share that from line with we've heard stories about what we've been inspired about this is our day to celebrate we will live on forever that means we will be infinite in our pursuit of Kono. And we will win. We will wear the lei of Kalanakila. And we will be back at Thomas Square. And we will be back to honor once again the work that we've all contributed to etched in stone, our names, like the names of our predecessors who signed that petition, will be honored and remembered. And so we must all strive to be the kupuna that we need to be. We need to raise the kupuna we need to have. And Uncle Kikuni, one of the best and if we can raise Kupuna to be like Uncle Kekuli then we will live forever we will rise we will live we will return we will be Pono So every time we see that high dance in the wind, our ancestors call their name out. They're with us, they're watching us, they're guarding us, they're protecting us. They inspire us, they affirm us. And likewise, the reciprocity of that relationship, the kuleana, the privilege, and the burden that we all carry together brings us to our people what Uncle Kekuni always talked about the true people and he is our people so Talaho Iho Iheya is about Ho'iko Kiko Ho'iko Aina Ho'iko Pono Ho'iko Ea And that's how we will pick ourselves up and live as we should.
live a formal life. It's through the restoration of our sovereignty. It's the reclamation of our lands through the deoccupation of everything we need. We are our ancestors. We are creating our own too. Mahalo to all of your mana collectively for contributing to the path that we all get to tread together. And these are one of the few moments I believe that us, the Kanaka in the fight, have to do good. Not so reactive, but we get to celebrate and enjoy the life that we make for each other. So, um, all everybody. Just let me say that everything that you're saying about Kekuni, yes, I agree. Um, somebody had to lead the way. Because we were all over the place and we were scattered. So Kekuni started with uh, these sessions where people would just read documents and have dialogue. And it kind of grew and grew. So after a few years of attending those sessions, um, we sort of like moved on because making room for others to come on board. Those were the Thursday night meetings if you guys ever went to his house every Thursday night. Okay. He modeled for us how to be kind, how to be generous, how to be wise. Know your stuff. So you just don't repeat everything that you hear, but you actually know your stuff. Read, those, read the documents, see what they say, and then engage in dialogue where you raise consciousness among the people that are around you because they're going to learn from you in the same way we learn from him in the same way we're growing kupuna who are around us so i'm going to speak as an old person i'm almost done but the reality is this kind of stuff has got to continue that that flag the flag belongs here did we ask permission to fly it no we didn't fly the flag in McKinley High School today except in our hands. Did we ask permission to do that? No. We just do it. And we know as we do these things that we're going to be coming up against the powers that be, the people who have, who are part of this oppressive structure and who are defending, defending for their lives, basically. But they know we're not going to stop. Okay. Why would we stop? We have everything to gain. And we are in the right, and we stand in truth. You may not like it, too bad. So we, we push and we push because we must. Because if we don't, we'll lie down and we might as well just give it up. And then people like Kikuni will have been here for, for what? They pushed us to where we are. We're gonna push everybody else to where they need to be at some future point. And it's gonna be like that forever until it's done. It's not done, not yet. And later on, we're gonna go off to the busy team's Kaulia. 1800s. He was pushing too. So you know we have a long history of not, not being silent, not being compliant, not buying lies. Um, we kind of owe it to ourselves, but mostly we owe it to our kids. Our kids need to know the truth, and if we don't tell them, we can't rely on the school system to give them that information. And if we don't tell them, and if we don't catch it, who will know? Really all I to Thanks. Just um, honored and excited to be living in this time and to honor the Kuleana of being a Kanaka and the responsibilities that come with being a Kanaka and get to be in the steps of our kupuna that went before us. Never going back to Eric. <laughs> it's always Kaukohu to the day I go to Po. Mahalo Papa Kikuni and every Mahalo Kupuna that came before us. Forty years ago, when Kikuni started doing La Hoi Hoi at Thomas Square, there were days when we'd only have like four or five people there. It was okay. That's all we needed. In those days, um, 
we were actually working against a lot of ignorance and a lot of prejudice. And what I think has happened is over the years, I think because of our actions in Kikuni, Kikuni's actions, more and more people know the truth because people have tried to hide the truth. And so what's happened is that as the years have gone by, we see more and more. This was like a little pebble in the ocean, making the ripples that get bigger and bigger. I think Kikuni would be pleased with what it has turned out to be involved to be. But the work is not done. There's still ignorance out there in the world. People, now we, we see like Black Lives Matter, and they say, oh yes, prejudice is bad. We need to work against that. But the prejudice is always 4,000 miles away involving not you. And the fact of the matter is, we have prejudice here. It's been here for 170 years. And people don't recognize it. But it's here. You have the same arguments, the same uh, deaths, uh, more arrests. We have more incarcerated Hawaiians. We have higher infant mortality. We have the shortest lifespan. And to this day, the status quo here denies that it has occurred. And it occurs to this very day. So I think part of our job is to still inform and enlighten. The fight is still here. We still have a lot of work to do. We still got to change the status quo. Sovereign right as people of faith 
in memory of Kikini Basel and all those who continue the legacy of Pu'e standing in Pono with the Aloha with Aloha. <laughs> Obviously, there's no program here. Whatever you feel moved to do is what you ought to do. Otherwise, we're going to wrap it up and and remember James Cowley too. Yeah. You guys good? We're good? to see Kekuni all the time. Of all the different people that we know who have passed, plenty. We know where they are, but only Kekuni has been calling us. <laughs> so it's him. We come and we see him. And then, I don't know, a couple years ago, we came and we found James Kaulia, who's right there, and understood his importance in our history. And then he started calling us too. So we can't do Kekuni without doing James. So we talk about them in that way. Kekuni and James are together. Um, and so I think in our in our heads there are these connections that are being made elsewhere um, not all here in this present time other kinds of connections that are being made or have been made that we ought to recognize and, and remember we have not done uh, a thorough inspection of who's very here but this place is full of Aloha Aina but it's also full of other people 
not necessarily friends. And I think that Ulu posted some things about what we were doing and got flack about it because Kanaka are out there saying, why would you want to go and clean somebody's headstone if they're not even friends, friends of the kingdom, friends of Ohaina? And we realized at that time that everybody was calling. Everybody wanted their headstone clean. Not just ours, not our kupuna only, but everybody. And then it gets kind of like, I don't know, a little concerning because we're going in listening to particular voices and there are other voices that are clamoring. And we haven't been, I don't know, I won't speak for myself, we haven't been picking and choosing which ones we want to pay attention to because the call is so loud. I pay attention to all, everybody. I wonder, I'm kind of wondering if there's a message for me. Because, you know, we talk about Kanaka a lot, as we ought to. We're in survival mode, and we got to move into, like, thrive mode. Mm -hmm. But we're not the only one. Mm -hmm. So... I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. All I'm saying is, is when, when somebody is calling, we haven't taken the time to differentiate who exactly is calling us to do what. Only that they need attention. No one is coming for them. No one has called their name. No one has talked to them in a very long time. But we're here. I mean, serious. When you start walking by a headstone and you greet them, Aloha, George. I don't know you, George. My guess is that nobody is coming by to say hello to you. Oh, hello to you. And you just keep doing it, one after another after another. I think maybe our kind of relationship is beginning to develop between us and them, or them and us. So they wait. Let's hear about James Kaulia, who has been like waving at us for a long time, and who we honored at the Hui Aloha Aina. Oh, what? The what year was it? So 2018. 2018, the, mm -hmm. the Hui Aloha that was revived in 2016 honored James Kaudia. And we did ceremony here, a lot of us, for him on that day. Anybody want to share history about that guy? It's the first time our Where's, group where's Richie? But you know <laughs> that? That is a group shot. Yeah. <laughs> Therefore, let us be fearless steadfast in our aloha for the aina and stand together in the thought that we should forever resist and oppose the annexation of Hawaii by America until the very last aloha aina. May our independence and our independent government be continued under its own laws, so let us ever refuse that our land be joined with America. At some point, this is over. Mm -hmm. Then what? Mm -hmm. So let's plan for the then what? Because we will not be in struggle for forever. And if you guys haven't noticed, I noticed the U.S. is collapsing, and they could take us with them if we That's allow right. it. That's right. But what should we be doing to prepare ourselves for when they move out? They yeah. are going to move out. They can't even what? Empires collapse. They can't afford the outreach. Mm. It's too much for them. So we are the outreach. I mean, we are. We're out there. Anyway, it behooves us to know more about the people that we're honoring. So that if it's one of us not be able to do it, somebody else can step up and they'll have the information to share. Keeping in mind that of the people that are around you probably know nothing. And they're going to hear you and they're going to learn from you and they're going to pass it on. Because that's what it's all about, right? Every time you share information with somebody in a group, they will remember that and they'll share it with somebody else. The next week, the next gathering. So they'll know something about James Kaulia that they didn't know before. They'll know something about Kikuni they never heard before. Um, so I guess all of us are in a constant state of training others, whether we know it or not. Not bad, it's good. Anybody else want to share? Okay, one thing. Yes. Um, so when you were talking earlier... Mask off, oh. you're muffled. <laughs> when you were talking earlier um, at Kikuni's, uh, and you said, 
Well, you said a couple things. You said one, you know, when you look at the flag, you see his like his smiling face, and um, and then you said, you know, we're here, you know we're there at Thomas Square this year, 2020, and when the American flag comes down, we're gonna be back. You know, we're gonna be back at Thomas Square, and we're gonna be, you know. Yeah. I'm like thinking of the I. I don't know. It just kind of hit me as like it's important for us to visualize like the end of this of this BS um, and and to think of like to think of the joy in the in the process of that and the joy and the success of that and like how you said like we'll be in the lay of of Kalana Kila and 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 at Thomas Square like for for the big flag oh for the big flag racing um, and I just I really I, I appreciated that because I even for myself I'm trying to see like the work that we're all doing even though it's like even though it can be really hard and really draining and like feeling very much like I mean Kuei is kind of wears you down sometimes too mm -hmm. um, to see it as like as joyful and like when you look at the flag it's like not it's not a defeat it's not struggle it's not not a chore it's not a chore um, it's not judging like yeah. through this impossible task it's like we like we were successful we already are successful like we will be successful um and we should see like Kekuni's smiling face every time we see the flag and <laughs> we should you know feel feel joyous about yeah. that vision that we have and like keep actually actually spending a moment to visualize that thing happening um mm. and then it will and then mm. so later on you can see we were successful yeah it's over I mean, we'll be on the other side. Yeah, we see it happening already, and then when we're finally there, we're like, "Oh, I visualized this." You know, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, I graduated. That's kind of what they say right when they're in school. If I can visualize, I'm going to be out of school one day. Yeah. We have always been successful. Um, the Kukuna who signing the petitions prevented the Treaty of Annexation from passing. So we won that one. We are winners. What we don't have is the ability to fight off an occupying. Um, hostile army right now. The things, time, times are changing. What's happening is that um, the American Empire is collapsing. It can't go on any further. And the, all the role models that they have right now of how the economy works, all that kind of stuff, is going to go by the wayside. And what we're going to have to do is revert back to what we were. Basically, um, an agrarian kind of community, Hawaii once fed itself and now you see all these lines the food lines because people are hungry mm. i think we we need to kind of get back to where we take care of ourselves we are food independent so all of you i urge if you have yards start planting because the time of hunger is upon us if any of you need i got uwala cuttings out the gazoos anybody wants talk to me yeah <laughs> It's uh, just plain old uwala, not purple. Okay. Ulu, Ulu is good. Don't forget when you guys all go home, fly your high Hawaii nice and Hi. tall wherever. Nice and yeah. We got all these flags at our house, but none of them are flying. Mm. We're gonna have to fly one. Yeah.
I thought I'd group shot, folks. <laughs> 